Hello and welcome to another week of Young We Run. You know, the series where I answer the questions uh, you make in the previous video. Um, this week, well, I, I, I don't have that much to talk about um, other than, than the questions themselves. There's been some rumors and some ramblings and ramblings and... Well, kind of the word has been spread that there are several new planes for War Thunder for the new version. Uh, take this with a grain of salt, because I don't know exactly which one of them will be in the version or not. Uh, some Soviet planes are coming, um, the Yak-9U, which of course begs the question of how many planes do the Soviets need. But let's face it, the Yak-9s that are in the game right now, they are not proper fighters. They are actually empty tank versions uh, that they are being used as fighters very effectively uh, as well, because uh, well, those weapons really hit hard. The new Jack, which is coming, the Jack 9U, is uh, a late war uh, plane, 1944-1945, depends on the engine with ma which mounts, uh, but uh, it's it's a late war version, so expect it, expect it at level 2 or 3. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I'm guessing, given the Jack 3 is at level 10, it's going to be around that level, I guess. Uh, which is bollocks, but yeah, whatever. Excellent plane. It's a really nice plane, the Jack 9U. Also, the IL-28, uh, which makes absolutely no real sense. I mean, why? Just why? A jet bomber. Um, but well, yeah, it's also coming. I'm guessing they will have at least the decency to add that one at level 20. We'll see. Um, seems the Germans are getting as well new planes. The Focal Fan A8, which I'm hugely, hugely, hugely um, um, excited about. Think of it as a Focal Fan A5, faster, especially at low levels. Mm, more or less equal in climbing, maybe a little bit worse, uh, heavier, which means won't be as agile and decent at turns, but much better at boom and zoom, and will have four 20mm cannons, but the four MG-151, so no longer MGFF, so a dream of a plane for me, to be honest. Also, is the plane that I have fondest memories of because it's the one I started flying in 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 this hike. There's also some rumors that the D9 is coming. So we'll see about that. Actually, I think Gaii has a really good um, chance now to make something of a variety thing in the German tree. We have the Focal Fanini D13 and D12 in the in the trees right now. The D13 and the D12 should perform like a focal fan any D9 with um, MW50, the methanol water injection, at low levels. At high levels, the 12 and 13 must be much, much, much better, because they have um, two state um, superchargers. At a low level, the focal fan any D9 with uh, methanol water will perform exactly the same as the maybe a little even better than the D12 and D13 because it's a little bit lighter. And believe it or not, I think they should not add a focal fan any D9 with methanol water injection. They should add the one with C3 uh, fuel injection, which have roughly 200 less uh, horsepower. Um, but would make it a kind of interesting uh, gap plane in levels 12 or 13, probably, between the A versions and the D versions. Also a little bit of variety, I mean, uh, we don't really need uh, all the all-powerful late-war versions of every plane. Um, the D9 with uh, C3 injection was the first one to see service in September 1944, so it makes for a nice September uh, level 13 plane. The methanol water injection become, became normal from January 1941, 1945, sorry. So uh, I think I used to have a C3 version, actually. Not as good as a performer, but still very strong plane and a, a beauty to fly. I mean, it's a focus one, any. Who can complain about that? Um, 
The British, uh, I think they have a Tempest Mark II coming, uh, which is kind of cool. <laughs> Level 16, it seems, is going to be. Um, think of the Tempest, make it faster, make it um, a little bit better climber, and that's the Tempest Mark II. Excellent plane, I mean, but uh, honestly, I think the Tempest II is going to be um have serious trouble because it's going to be a level 16 and level 16 you are going to see a lot of jets meanwhile the tempest mark 5 is going to be at level 14 in which you rarely if ever see a jet but still the tempest 2 amazing plane so uh, and i think the japanese uh, get the frank the ki 84 so that would be cool finally finally a fire for the japanese of course, I'm hoping, hoping, the Ki-84 climbs like it should, not like the planes in the Japanese tree right now, which all climb too good, but really, the Japanese tree needs some love. Sims is coming, I'm not sure it will. So far, we have only seen screenshots of the Jack 9U and the, um, and the Tempest 2. The others are just rumors. Not confirmed at all, but that's really cool. That's something I'm really looking forward. There's also the perspective that soon, soon, TM, uh, we should have tanks. So really, it seems uh, good times are coming to War Thunder. Um, well, if they finally fix the A20G and the Broken Fighter, it's going to be wonderful. <laughs> we'll see about that. Anyway. I think it's enough for the intro and some comments on what's going on in War Thunder uh, right now. Let's move on to the question. And the first question is, um, who's your favorite fighter ace in World War II and why? Also, if you have any particular bomber crew you like a lot, please tell us who, uh, who that is. Well, as for the bomber crew, the most famous one in World War II, other than the Atomic Bomb is one, of course, which I don't really admire a lot, I, uh, it's, it's kind of interesting because I admire them for doing it and not becoming crazy afterwards. Uh, if I was the guy who had to fly that bomber and drop an atomic war, uh, bomb, I would have been unable to sleep for the, for the rest of time. Not because the atomic bomb was needed or unneeded. I'm not going to enter into that. I think, it's my opinion, that actually atomic bombings saved more lives than they costed. But there's too much politics into that, because I think the first atomic bombing was kind of excusable, let's say that. I think the Nagasaki bombing was not. I think the Nagasaki bombing was a warning call for the Soviets, more than a way to finish of the uh, World War II. But in any case, out of politics and not all out of that, if you are a pilot and you are tasked with a mission in the military, you have to follow the orders. And, um, well, you always can say no, but good luck in the in the military prison. To, to conduct such a mission requires some kind of... Really, I, I don't know, I, I would have been plagued with nightmares for the rest of my life if I was in that crew. So in a way, I kind of admire the way they could move forward. Um, but I don't really think... I mean, the pilot of the Nola Gay, for the rest of his life, said he was proud of what he did. I don't think that's a reason to be proud. And so, so it's kind of disgust and admiration for those guys. But admiration, pure admiration for the bomber crew is, is the most famous one, the bomber crew of the Memphis Bell, the first B-17 that uh, completed a full tour, uh, tour of duty in over Germany. They did it at a time where a tour of duty was 25 combat missions over Germany, uh, and the 8th Air Force have been attacking the, the continent for for more than a year, and not a single crew have been able to survive that. The loss rate of the 8th Air Force was tremendous at that time. They, they were flying without escorts and really was a true, true, true feat and achievement to, to complete that tower of duty. So, yeah, 
probably that's the bomber crew I admire the most. As for the fighter um, ace, I have to. Most of the people admire Hartman, uh, Eric Hartman. 352 uh, confirmed kills really speak a lot about that pilot. But for me, probably Marcel. Hans Hoch, uh, Hans Marcel, uh, the star of, of Africa. Uh, he was the lead, lead, lead scoring ace in, in for the Luftwaffe for for several, quite some time. Um, and he has several uh, multi kill sorties, sorties, and actually he, the way he died is, I mean, lacks glamour. <laughs> His uh, BF109 G engine started to fail and he had to bail out. And when he bailed out, he um, smashed himself against the rudder, uh, became unconscious, and he couldn't pull the tooth, so he smashed it against the ground. But as a fighter pilot, he was the, the archetypical fighter. I mean, he was um, wild, he was an insubordinate, he was a, a true prima donna. And in a way, I like that. In a way, I like that. I like people who are the best and they know I are the best. Of course, in a way, I also dislike them, but there's some attraction to that. And the other pilot I admire the most, fighter pilot, it's um, Walter Novotny, uh, the highest uh, focal for any ace in the Eastern Front, um, the commandant of uh, GJ-54. And one of the best fighters of the world, fighter, fighter pilots of the world, and of course he got it in the in the plane, which is my favorite. So out of that, probably uh, there are a lot. I mean, as for piloting skills, probably those two. As for general behavior of people who were really, really great pilots, really great aces, and amazing, amazing guys. Well, you can go for Bob Johnson, you can go for Stanford Tuck. I mean, a guy who was flying fighters with two prosthetic legs. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. Uh, Stanford Tuck lost, he lost his legs in um, an exhibition in the mid 30s uh, about um, uh, an exhibition plane, he crashed against the ground, and he had both his legs amputated. And you would think that that would have ended the career of a fighter pilot. Well, no, he got prosthetic legs, he started playing golf, he even played tennis, believe it or not, he played tennis with prosthetic legs, and where the war broke out, um, he, he, well, he was called to return for the to be fight um, fighters in 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 the RAF, um, the Royal Air Force, um, and there's some very curious histories about this guy. Uh, of course, I mean, a pilot with two prosthetic legs. Who would say that? There's going to be a lot of things about that guy. Um, he he was shot down in 1941 in a Spitfire Mark V over France, and he had to crash land. And, uh, well, of course, the German patrols came to capture the pilot and they were totally surprised to what they saw, because what they saw was a pilot with no legs. Um, his prosthetic legs had been um, broken in, in the landing, so he had to get out of the plane without them. And, of course, when the Germans came, they, they found out and they, they thought, like, what the... You can imagine the admiration and surprise I felt. Later on, uh, while he was in the hospital, recovering from his wounds from, from the crash landing, he actually wrote a letter to Adolf Galland, the lead ace in the Luftwaffe by, of that time, asking if something could be done for the Royal Air Force to send him a replacement prosthetic legs for his. Galland, of course, was totally surprised, came to interview him, uh, and he well, he moved the, the wires for the Luftwaffe to clear a path for a single British bomber to come and harm her and under no attack so they could uh, deploy uh, prosthetic legs for, for, for attack. The um, 
know, British didn't take that like they, they weren't so sure about that, you know. So what they did was organize a true strike, a bomber strike of several bombers, and between those bombers there was one which was calling uh, carving a box with the the legs, and they parachuted them down to, to the ground, but of course it was in a proper strike and not just one plane who, which could be subjected to attack. So Tak got his legs. Then it speaks a lot about his chivalry and his sense of honor that Galan got to be friends with him, of course. Galan admired him a lot. What's not to be admired about a pilot who flies with prosthetic legs, after all? So he actually took him out of the prisoner of war camp and he took him to a Lutbaf airbase and he actually led him um, into the cockpit of a B-109 to take a look at the at the fighter and to see it and at that moment um, Tak who could have started the engine and tried to flee and later on he actually confessed that he was tempted to do so, but he didn't want to betray the trust that Galan had, had put on, on him. So, really a gentleman, and high sense of honor, which speaks volumes of him. Of course, that doesn't mean that that didn't try to escape. He actually did, with prosthetic legs. And he was, cap he was captured. Uh, you would say that the Germans would have been angry at him for, for trying to escape. And no, they weren't. They weren't at all. They were so admired that they let him keep his legs. Without them, of course, there was no way he was running away. But he tried to escape with prosthetic legs. It's it's a wonderful history of a super... Really, it's, it's, it's amazing what the human can, can do just to get over disgraces that happened to him. And that guy is an instant and an and, and example for so many of us. Um, a guy with prosthetic legs who was playing tennis. Really. <laughs> so, yeah, probably as for fighting skills, um, Nobotmi or, or Marcel. And as for being a gentleman and superation and um, honor and, and being a gentleman, probably stand for TAC. Probably, yeah. So, yeah, next question. Let's see what we have here. Ram, do you think they should have some of the X weapons that Germany had? For instance, the world's, fir world's first guided bomb, um, the Fritz X, or the Oka rocket bomb for the Japanese. Um, I don't think they should have that. Because they were used in World War II, um, but that would open a huge can of worms. Uh, let let explain myself. What you describe are well two instances of um, very extreme weapons. In the case of the Oka, the Japanese uh, kamikaze bomb, well, stupid weapons. <laughs> but the German guided bombs and the X weapons were really advanced technologically. I mean, the guided missiles, the um, the Fritz X, the Hensels um, 253s, etc. Um, they were radio controlled or white control, white controlled um, missiles actually they were bombs but well actually the Fritz X had a rocket it was an, a missile in the in the whole definition of the word um, they were very advanced they were there they were used but if you add that then the guys who fly American planes will want the bat the bat was an air to ground missile which was actually rather guided, guided. It was the first ice to ground um, kind of radar control uh, missile, I think. Um, and then the British will want the FIDO, the um, anti submarine self homing weapon, the first uh, acoustic uh, air dropped um, torpedo in the world. And then the Germans will war Wasserfall. Wasserfall was a radio controlled and radio guided prototype, because it wasn't made in production, it didn't make production in, in Germany, uh, SAM, which was a surface-to-air missile. And they would also ask for the X-4, which was an air-to-air -air missile with wide control, and was used uh, as the basis for the first anti-tank missiles after World War II. I mean, if you add one, you have to add them all. And then you, we wouldn't be playing uh, War Thunder, we would be playing um, 
Secret Weapons of the World War II. It's a huge can of worms, worms and I wouldn't like to see that in the game at all. So I don't think it's a good idea. Also, uh, more questions. What yam is your favorite? And what yam would you be? Well, strawberry is my favorite yam. And what yam would I be? I don't know. Lemon? Because it's acid. <laughs> and I'm sarcastic at times, very, very acid. I don't know which yam would I be. But my favorite yam probably is strawberry. Yeah. So, next question. Hey, Ram. I just unlocked my P47 uh, at stock and they feel extremely underwhelming. And I was just wondering if after a boom and soon pass on, say, a B109, what, would, uh, what to do? Because I don't seem to be able to take advantage with the speed and separation. I should go vertical or something. Thanks. Well, um, stock, the P47 climbs really slowly. So you have to spend uh, more time at the game beginning climbing to altitude. Other than that, really, mm, stock or not stock is not a big difference. It, the plane is amazing. What to do after the boom and pass? Well, um, just pull out. And um, depending on the different difference of energies, if you have a load of energy over the enemy, you can go purely in the vertical. So, diving attack, fire, pull up into a very steep vertical climb. If, however, your energetic states are not that different, you have more energy, but it's not that big of a difference, extending the horizontal with a slight zoom climb, maybe 10 degrees, 20 degrees at the most. Uh, that will give you, in the, in the first case, you gain vertical separation, you keep your energy, and you get out of his gun's range, and you get set up for a second attack. In the second instance, you get horizontal separation, so he can't um, go for you and fire at you and come behind you. And uh, what you are wi winning is separation, and you should move away before coming again, because it seems it means that you don't have enough energy to keep on boom and zooming. So that's the rule, basically. If you have have a lot, a lot of energy over the enemy, use vertical separation. If you don't have that much energetic separation, use horizontal extensions and disengage. Get out of the view, uh, expect, uh, wait until the other guy is engaged by someone else, etc. Et before coming back. So those more or less are the rules I'll follow. Uh, next question. Kimi Raikkonen or Lewis Ham Hamilton? Well, if you are speaking about uh, driving ability, I think Lewis Hamilton. If you are speaking as which one would, of both do I like personally the most, Kimi Raikkonen. I mean, pff, the guy, <laughs> the guy is really, it's, 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 it's a laugh. It's, he, he doesn't speak. He's like Mr. Silence. It's stone face. He can win a grand prix and he seems like he's one, I don't know, uh, a cookie. <laughs> It's 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 so fun. I mean, it's so funny to watch. I like the guy because of that, and also because he's the kind of guy who w goes out and drinks like mad. He's finished after all, but he's a drinking finish, and I love that. So he's he's a very fun guy. He's not. I mean, he's not fun. He's serious all the time, but in his seriousness, he's so fun. Uh, Lewis Hamilton, I really dislike it at first, uh, when he broke into Formula 1, and probably because of the first years and the problems he had with Alonso, but after some time it's clear that the problem was not him, the problem was mm, the team manager, probably his father, and he was badly advised, really badly advised. After some time, and after some years, now he's a little bit more mature and he's making his own decisions, I like him a lot more. I kind of feel sympathy for for him, and at the beginning, really, I disliked him a lot. But it was not a case of so. I mean, he was a kid; he he wasn't making the call, so nothing to blame on him. And um, also, he has a knockout girlfriend. Oh my gosh, what a beauty! Uh, anyway, next question. Uh, hey, Ram, can you do some full real battles of War Thunder? No. 
I have spoken it a lot uh, in the past. I don't like uh, the chasing the dot gameplay mechanic that's in full real. It's not full real. It's hard code for blind people. Um, so the day they add some visual cues uh, for that game mode, I will happily play it. In the meantime, no, no, because as I said, chasing the dot is not fun. And uh, besides, I have problems uh, spotting dots. So no, no, no chance at all. Um, also, can you fly other flight sim, IL-2, series, etc. And so others how hard is to fly a plane simulator because many people don't get how hard it is. The problem with that is that I'm actually, I'm doing a lot of stuff. I mean, I'm doing War Thunder stuff. I'm doing Hearthstone uh, stuff. I'm doing uh, tank um, training videos uh, with uh, T-34 versus Tigers. Um, I'm adding so much stuff from different games that another one would be a little bit too much. Not because I wouldn't like to, but because I can upload just so many uh, videos a day uh, because my upload speed is what it is. So I'd rather start concentrate, stay concentrated in War Thunder and maybe one other thing, which is Hearthstone, uh, than start doing a lot of different stuff. I actually was very close to do an SSI video uh, maybe a month ago, but in the end I decided against it because of that same, uh, same reason. To do just a one-off video of one, just one uh, game in a different game is not worth it. Really, it's not because after one week that video will be forgotten. No one is going to see it. So, not really worth it. If I was to do a series, like I'm doing with EU4, like I'm doing with Hearthstone, it would make sense, but it doesn't really make sense. I would do so if I could upload a video in maybe half an hour, but it takes me, in average, two, three hours to upload a 30, mini, 30 minutes video and uh, double that for for an hour video, which are the latest game with RAMs. So, I, I, I can't really spread too much. I can't really spread too thin. I want to keep focused mostly in War Thunder. Maybe in the future, maybe, if I can get a better connection, I will do so. But in the meantime, no, no. For practical reasons, not because I, did, I, I wouldn't like to do it, but for practical reasons, I can't do it. Next question. Do you fly with uh, keyboard or joystick? 99% of the time, keyboard and mouse. Now and then, maybe once a month or something like that, I feel like plugging in my flight gear and do a flight out in, in joystick. But 99% uh, of the time, uh, keyboard and, and mouse. Uh, if you want to do to know how I fly with keyboard, you can take a look at the Flight Combat Series School. And um, there's a video there about controls and how I use them. So, yep. Next question. In War Thunder, if you choose full aircraft controls, you will find an engine tab, which contains options for fixture, mixture, prop pitch, radiator, supercharger, magneto position, and prop feathering. Although I'm not a stick user, I'd be really interesting, uh, interested in how those things affect your aircraft. Do you think you could make a video about such advanced, advanced stuff sometime, Ram? Yes, I am actually to, going to do it. The thing is that to understand all those controls, you need to understand how an engine works. And it's not something I can do in a single video. Uh, I actually spoke about this um, in other jam with Rams. I'm planning to do a video about engine management. But to do that first, you need to understand how a piston engine um, of World War II worked. Um, and then we can enter the controls and how they affect the engine performance and how they affect the performance of the plane. But first, we have to start with the basis. Um, it's something I'm really looking forward to. Um, the thing is, of course, it's going to require time. So I, I'll try to find, find some time and, and do it. Um, but yeah, something like that is coming in the future. Don't worry. Next question. Ram. How do you know all you do about aircraft and so on? 
Well, um, I have spoken about this in the past. Um, basically, uh, since I was a very small kid, I got uh, I got excited about planes. And later on about World War II. I'm a huge freak about World War II. I, I'm nuts about it. I'm excited to, to get to know all I can about it. Um, how did I get to know and to learn uh, all I do? Well, a lot of years of reading, reading, a lot of years of getting, being interested in this, a lot of years of being in forums, a lot of years of discussing this stuff, a lot of years of uh, flying simulators, a lot of years of everything. Just yes, experience, interest, and is something and a topic I'm really interested in. So yeah, that's how I know all I know. Uh, years and years upon years of uh, learning, reading, and practicing in flight simulators, and tank simulators, and submarine simulators, and naval simulators. So all kind of simulators. <laughs> Next question. That's this is a fun one, uh, but probably it's going to be a disappointing answer. Uh, weird question. If any two worth play, uh, if any two planes in War Thunder could have a child, which planes should do it? Describe the new baby fighter. <laughs> um, actually, I don't think there's need for that, because two great planes actually have a child together. Um, and I'm describing the late Focus 190 series. If you look at the Focus 190 Dora and the TA152 series, they actually are is kind of as if the Focus Fanini and the BF-109 had a child. Um, the resulting planes mixed the great, great acceleration and clean rate of the BF-109 and mixed it with the supreme uh, control harmony of the Focus Fanini, the extreme boom and abilities it had, the great roll rate it had. Um, and honestly, I think that's the best Morbid you could wait for. For me, the best World War II plane didn't enter service, or maybe it did. You, it seems that two or three of them were delivered to, to frontline units. Is a TA-152C. Uh, Focus for Nene, um evolved into a, a TA-152 with a Daimler-Benz C603 engine, which was the engine that the Focus family should have carried all along the, the series. But because of several reasons, political and practical, it never did. And that's kind of the offspring of the BF-109 K4 and the Focus family A8, uh, playing with excellent acceleration and clean rate abilities, amazing boom and summer, magnificent high altitude performance, very good uh, low altitude performance. It was a Terminator. It was the best World War II originated plane. And I know there are a lot of people who say, oh, Hawker Fury, Hawker Sea Fury, oh, Hawker Tempest 2, oh, P 518. For me, there's no competition. The best Python engine fighter ever to have existed is the TA 152C. Uh, it was. Brutal, brutal, a brutal performer, a brutal maneuver, uh, maneuverer. A, he simply couldn't turn, but no German plays good. Uh, but mixed the best abilities of the Focus and any and the BF109. Um, for me, that's the best plane that has ever existed with a piston engine and being a fighter. So, yep, yeah, that's the. Um, well, actually, it can be answered that way. The two planes that should have a child, the Focus and any. Uh, A5 and the BF109 um, K4, and that would be the TA152C. And well, um, well, last question, and then this one for well, you'll see. Dear Ram, what are your opinions of War Thunder tank, tank historical battles playing out? Do you think that the expert tankers will be defined even more than expert now? Experts now? Or will battles become very derpy and indecisive because of poor understanding of war armor warfare by some players? I actually think that it's going to change the meta game a lot. Um, high altitude won't be as high as it is right now. Right now, having dogfights at 6,000 meters is 
pretty much common in, in historical battles, at least at the, at the game beginning. Um, probably the fights will be drag, um, dragged lower. As for what will be the decisive uh, factor in tank battles, is, I think it's going to be skill. Uh, I think it's going to be as therapy as uh, as the aircraft ones. I mean, most of the people, 85% of the people is going to be absolute therapy. Because of the very mere, mere reason that this is a free-to-play game and a lot of people who don't just don't want to learn and just want to have some immediate fun without second thought to it will play it uh, but i think skill it will be of course the the main factor but team skill the team with more people with skill will win the games and the team with more depth will lose it exactly the same way as, as it is in in the air section right now i thought there are going to be planes in those play in those in those battles so we'll see how it is but I think nothing will change in with regards to uh, deciding factors. All the games I have flown have been decided by the team with more skilled players. B because in, in World of Thunder you can't carry your team the way you do in, in World of Tanks, for instance. In World of Tanks you can carry your team, but in World of Thunder you can't. You can't. I mean, it doesn't work that way. If you don't have a team, a competent team, they are going to massacre you. So one great pilot in a team full of derps is going to lose, while four decently good pilots in uh, in the other team are going to win the battle. So numbers of people with experience is going to be what decides the, the battle. Exactly the same way as, as it is right now, at least I think. So yeah, let's end up and um, with, with a little bit of personal history here. Ram, which was your more embarrassing moment? I don't have that many embarrassing moments in, in, in my life. I didn't have a lot of them. I'm kind of... Yeah, the, the guy who <coughs> is careful not to do something really stupid in public. But the most embarrassing moment, well, I guess you can go back to my adolescence when I was 15 years old. And I have been a, all my life, I have have a real and a strong weakness for girls. <laughs> and just it's way. I like girls a lot. I like girls really, really, really a lot. And, uh, well, after, I, I mean, I guess everyone, everyone in his life, every, at least every man or every, every guy has gone through this period of his time where he was a total retard about women or girls. And he was ashamed of them and scared of them and very shy in their presence. When I was 15 years old, I was like that. Later on, I, I really moved on, and now, let's say, I, I'm not shy in front of girls at all. Uh, <laughs> kind of the opposite. But, <laughs> but back then, I was very shy. And I was at high school, and I was kind of really attracted to this girl. Um, but I was really shy, and I wouldn't approach her because I was really scared of reaction. Um, so it's kind of, I was doing the kind of stupid stuff you do when you are a kid. I mean, I was sewing off in front of her a lot. I played a lot of football back then and I was the kind of guy who would just look at where that girl is. Is, is he looking? Is, is she not? Okay, let's get this ball and start mm, doing this trick of touching the ball without letting it touch the floor. Um, I would be like... So off, being a so off, when I knew she was looking, I was so off. And there was this particular instance of um, one day in the high school, I knew, well, so there were these big ladders. Uh, you have to, well, between f floors. We had uh, class in, at one hour in the top floor, and he was cla we had class at the second hour in a lower floor. So. Uh, as the classes were changing, we had to move from class to class. I was walking down the stairs, 
and uh, uh, she was I saw she was in the hall down down in the hall of the lower floor and I don't recall exactly exactly what the hell I was doing but I wanted to show off I think uh, the thing is I tried to do like a big jump off yeah like there was a it was a huge um there were huge steps i mean um stairs sorry like maybe 25 steps it was very large so i tried to do this stuff of going down the stairs in big leaps like jumping one step jumping other step jumping other step oh look i'm down here well the first jump and the first step went okay like first steps in one in one drop really cool really sewing but the second step wasn't that good back then i actually already had my weak uh, knee injury uh, a football injury i i have gotten some months before and um, i landed on my weak foot uh, and my knee failed simply couldn't stand my weight i twisted my knee <laughs> and i kind of have jumped over my twisted knee to fall the rest of the stair the stairs down to the floor a huge huge well that was brutal and with such luck that i was being as a wolf to impress her well i just fell at, at her feet like one meter away from her and this was this huge sensation of my my face being on fire from the huge embarrassment my knee hurting like mad like absolutely mad i have twisted it really badly and i actually had it injured before and this was just even more on that and of course the poor girl was looking down at me like uh, are you okay? And I'm like this sensation of having my ha my face on fire, burning from from the embarrassment, and looking up and oh my, yeah, I'm, I'm totally fine. I'm cool. I'm perfectly cool. So I stand up, and I so as soon as I put my right foot on the on the floor, it's like that this breath couldn't pain going up from my knee, but be. Of course, I had to show off. I'm cool. I'm okay. I'm super tough. I'm the tough guy. Like biting my tongue, not to scream because it was so painful. Uh, no, I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay. It's, it's, it's all cool. So there I go, walking normally. I move out, move away. I enter an empty class. I close the door. I twist on myself and I like. <laughs> from the pain I was feeling on, on the knee. That, that was stupid. That was, I was so embarrassed. I mean, in front of the girl and all her friends, in front of maybe half my class, and well, 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 everyone saw that. Well, that was, and of course, later on, my knee, I had to pretend for the late, all, all the rest of the classes that I had perfect, nothing, that I was okay, and my knee was hurting like mad uh well that was that was uh, oh, oh. uh fun stuff and fun stories later on uh, years later actually i found that the girl was actually so attractive for me as i was for her but she was as shy as i was and never ever happened between us ever uh and that's i think that's one of the capital moments when you realize I was a total idiot. <laughs> I was treating, I mean, girls are not like goddesses. They are human beings. They are people. So yeah, I, I guess that helped me become a little more normal with girls. But back then I was so shy. I'm not anymore. I mean, right now I'm kind of, well, uh, I like pulling the, the, the knee of, of any girl I, I come across, basically. Uh, back then, I, I was like shy even to say hello. But yeah, probably that's my most embarrassing moment. It's very innocent. It's very back in the in the time. 
but I still remember that sensation of having my face on fire. I knew I was crimson red, crimson red. I was so embarrassed and pretending I was perfectly okay. So yeah, and of course, all my friends laughing at me like, ha ha ha. Well, whatever. Yeah, that's that was my most embarrassing moment. So well, that's going to be it for this video. As, as always, remember to put up your questions in the comment section below um, and upload those questions that you want to see answered the best. Um, I hope you have fun. I hope you like this Yum with Ram. And as always, guys, thank you very much for watching and see you later.